Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Welcome to our uh, monthly tech meet for the Rolls Royce Owners Club of Southern California. And today we will be disassembling and resealing a Silver Cloud 3 steering pump. As you notice, this car above us right here, it's a filthy piece of junk. Um, and I'm embarrassed to have it in my shop. We're, we're going to work on it anyway. Uh, belongs to Gene, our advertising director. He uh, restored it years ago and is always keeping it clean. I caught him using one of these yesterday underneath the car. So that'll tell you the, uh, uh, the degree to which he likes to do things. Um, all right, here we go. This is the steering pump for this, the Cloud 3. Um, it is specific to the Cloud 3. I think actually the sil early Silver Shadows used the, used the same one. I believe it's an Oldern Eaton. Um, which, yeah, Oldern Eaton uh, steering pump. Um, the big change when they went from the Silver Cloud 2 to the Silver Cloud 3, they changed the steering box. They wanted more assist. Uh, they put this pump on, which boosted the pressure, so you get a big boost. Uh, Gene has already partially disassembled it. When it's on the car, it has it is bolted to this bracket, which is, if you can see, it's an adjuster bracket, so you can adjust the, the belt. So that's already off. And he has also taken off the cover. Now this, oops, as you can see, the cover is normally on here. Uh, so you take off this one bolt. There is a seal up here and a little shouldered washer under here, rubber washer. That is a separate seal kit for, for this pump when you, if you want to order the factory seals. Last time I priced those two seals together was like a hundred and something dollars. So generally this seal doesn't go bad. Uh, if, if it is bad I would try to source either a gasket or something like that because essentially the, the fluid should never be up that high. You're only going to get a little splashing. So, you know, if you want to do it right and spend that extra money, you can get the factory parts. Um, if you notice in here, there's a little filter. Um, Gene and I had this discussion yesterday about him having to change this. I think you can buy these. Flying Spare still sells these. Um, uh, it's a good thing to have a filter in the steering pump, but all modern steering boxes or pumps don't have them. They might have a screen where you pour it in, but that's about it. So I told him he didn't have to change it because he changed it 10 years ago? At least. 10 years ago and how many miles? A few. <laughs> a few meaning less than 10,000. So we don't have to worry about changing this thing? No, I wouldn't worry about it unless it's broken and falling apart. If it's broken and falling apart, then you know you might want to do that. Clean that one out. Filters are not meant to be cleaned. They're paper filters and they usually plug up. So normally when this is, here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolt this on real quick. <clears throat> so if you leave this bracket on, it's a little bit easier to do some of the work, clamp it in the vise. All right, so I'll take it off. I don't normally work on this section, that's why it's so clean. Gene works over here. Uh, so I'm, I use a, a butterfly gun to Zip that right off of there. Now we can clamp it back in there, and we'll we'll see if we're lucky. Uh, this 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 should just oh look at that look at that it pulled right off. Now if you look inside there, if you look at this, there's a slot or a groove cut in there. There's a Woodruff key in there. which is pretty permanent. I don't know if you want to see that in the... So when you put it back on, since this is a straight shaft, um, you want to line it up. So we got lucky there. Now, I like to loosen these screws, which they've been replaced with Allen screws. Normally it's a Phillips screw, so they are very tight, and normally you would have to use an impact driver. That's this little gizmo here, which you stick, stick in a Phillips screw, and you whack it with a hammer, and it'll knock it loose so you can unscrew it. Yeah. Normally, a Phillips screwdriver, they get tight, so you can't really loosen it up. So, so this one's got Allen screws. So 
So I'll just knock these loose here while it's on here so because I have a little bit of leverage. And what this front plate does is it anchors the front of this reservoir and it also holds in the bearing that uh, runs on the, uh, the pulley runs off it. So now we can take it off. And uh, now, to get this reservoir off, you have to unscrew this piece right here and it's normally not too tight. So a pair of channel locks will do it. If it's super tight, then you have to use vice grips. There we go. So you have that part that came out. Um, it has a little, like a diffuser plate in here that uh, holds the filter, and it keeps the fil the fluid directed first of all through the filter uh, so it looks like the return line this line comes in and it goes up inside the filter and it comes out the outside there we go there's that we can take this cover back off if at any time anyone has any questions feel free to ask or any comments and the reason you'd want to take this off is there's leakage or something, or noise, or... Right. Well, noise, first of all, when a steering, if, if you start up your car, you turn the steering wheels, and you hear this growling noise, uh, first thing you want to do is check for fluid. Um, that's almost always the cause of the growling noise when you turn the steering wheel. Uh, and the reason it's growling is because it's sucking air into this hydraulic pump, and it just makes a lot of noise. Now if you fill it up and you turn the steering wheel back and forth all the way a number of times, you'll still get some growling and sometimes if you let the car idle it'll growl for quite a while but eventually it'll, it'll clear up and you can turn it off and you'll see bubbles coming up. But once you get the proper level and the growling goes away then if you had to add fluid you know you have a leak somewhere. Uh, this pump happens to be leaking. You can actually see some leakage coming through the front which would indicate if you look at that little sh the, the fluid there, that the front seal has come out or has, has gone bad. Um, you see that right there? You see yes. the, it's dripping there? And we can't have any kind of leaks on this car, obviously. Uh, but it's British. <laughs> it's British, that's true, but it's jeans also. So if, if you look inside here, you'll see there's a plate. And what we've got here is uh, two passages going down. Um, one is the intake for the pump. When the pump is on the front of the engine, normal rotation is clockwise from the front. Okay, So that's going to come into play when we get it apart. We're going to have to remember that. So what happens is it sucks in fluid and it uh, it builds up, it'll, it'll go to the steering system and once you operate the steering wheel it'll build pressure up to the 1250 pounds and if it goes past that there's a relief valve and it'll come up through this other hole. Uh, this right here is a return hose which is a low pressure hose coming from the steering box. So when the car's running and you're not using the steering the fluid's just recycling, it's not doing anything. But as soon as you activate the steering box, it needs that pressure because the valve's changing there, and that's when you'll, you'll, uh, it'll, it'll kick in and you'll build pressure. That plate up there has to come off. Now, there's, there's one bolt. Those of you who don't are trying this at home and don't have uh, air tools like I do, uh, then. Uh, I would recommend you try to unloosen all these things while it's still clamped in the vise. So here we go. We've got this plate, which had that bolt and this bolt, right? And then it had this thing screwed to it. Oh no, had this on there first, and then this thing screwed to it. There is your uh, reservoir. Uh, here is one of the lower O-rings. 
There, there's this little plate here. It's, this is a spacer plate that has four O-rings. Another one. Here's a locator that goes on this. And then here's another one. Okay. So what happens is when the car sits, you also have this O-ring right here that goes to this front plate. So when it sits, if it just leaks, you can, sometimes you can get in there with a mirror and see it. As you can tell, this car, this thing, even though it's leaking, is awfully clean already. Uh, normally they will not be as clean, so it'll be hard to tell for sure. So now, we'll take off this front plate. I was instructed by my website guy to encourage anybody who's watching this to go to my Facebook page, Ronnie's Garage, or the Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California, and uh, like us, or peruse, whatever you like. Uh, I guess that's marketing, but what can I say? And Steve, who's behind the camera, for you, those of you watching, uh, edits these videos. We do this once a month, so it's a lot of work, and we appreciate his, uh, his efforts. All right, there's the cover plate. As you can see, it's got a notch in here, or a, a groove in here that holds the front bearing in. That goes there with all those screws. 